I'm Paolo Nespoli, Italian astronaut of the European Space Agency, and uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, how people get, or astronauts get qualified to fly in space. So what is the, what, what does that astronaut do when they don't fly in space? Uh, that's a little bit the, the question that I want to address into this uh, segment. Um, so I was uh, hired as an astronaut by the Italian Space Agency, then sent to the European Space Agency. But the European Space Agency does not yet have uh, its own uh, vehicle to go in space, so it, it relies uh, either on the Americans or on the, shot, on the um, Russians to send astronauts in space. So depending on the uh, agreement that is done, you could be sent as a European Space Agency astronaut to Johnson Space Center in Houston or to Star City in Moscow. Uh, I was, uh, when I was selected, uh, uh, the initial uh, idea was that I would fly on the space shuttle. So I was sent to NASA Johnson Space Center in Texas, uh, starting uh, what is called the basic training part of uh, the training, which is essentially taking a candidate astronaut, uh, which means somebody that has been selected as an astronaut but not yet qualified as an astronaut, uh, and this person could be uh, you know, an engineer, a physicist, a medical doctor, a, a geologist, a ge a, a, you know, a, a veterinarian, a, somebody that has a technical background, uh, but take this person and qualifying uh, for both uh, being part of the, of, of the crew of the vehicle, in, in my case was the space shuttle, and, and start in giving uh, him or her all the knowledge and capabilities to be able to operate in space as, uh, as the hand of the scientist that wants to do a particular experiment, which not necessarily uh, is in the field that, that, that you know. For example, I'm an engineer, and I could have been called in space to do a biology experiment or a you know, medical experiment, something that is not something that I would have done as part of my profession. Well, the astronauts need to, uh, to, to learn about almost everything. You know, I always say that uh, astronauts are uh, persons that are able to do everything at a decent level. You, know, you don't need to be Superman, you don't be a super genius, but you need to be able to do anything and be able with good results. So, um, and this part of the training is called basic training, and again, for me, it was done in the United States, but it could be done in Russia or in Europe. Uh, we have carried out uh, basic training uh, in Europe for the latest class of uh, ESA astronaut. Uh, in what consisted this training? Well, uh, first of all, it lasted about uh, two years, and um, uh, the first part, uh, um, was uh, focused on the technical uh, intricacies of the space shuttle, or the vehicle we were supposed to fly in, and you need to understand how the shuttle works. Uh, remember, as, as a professional astronaut, you're not going to be seated in the back of the aircraft going in vacation or going to a meeting and reading a, your computer. You're going to be sitting in the cockpit flying the plane or fly, flying the spacecraft. If anything goes wrong, uh, if any system breaks, it's you who has to intervene. So, so you need to understand exactly how all the systems work, how their intricacy, their interdependency. And this, uh, there is a big uh, theoretical part that starts uh, uh, well, we start this with a big theoretical part, and then little by little you go into uh, playing with computers. At the beginning, uh, the, well, computer simulators. Uh, at the beginning, the simulators are relatively simple. It's just a computer screen with a diagram, maybe, I don't know, a flow of fluid, and uh, the instructor is just telling you, well, what happens if I break this valve? And, and, and then you, you should, if you have enough understanding and, and knowledge, you should be able to to at least understanding, uh, uh, I don't know, if the system uh, will uh, overheat or will lose cooling or will lose the heat, I mean, things like this. And, and so um, your, your knowledge on the system is, has to be really, really strong. And, uh, and then uh, little by little we started uh, also exploring uh, the other fields of, uh, of activities that we do in space, as I said, for example, metallurgy or, or biology. 
Uh, we would, for example, learn how to take blood and put it in a centrifuge, treat it so that it could be uh, then uh, stored and analyzed. We would, uh, we would do a lot of practical things, uh, which means, you know, electrical classes. They will give you a bunch of uh, um, components and ask uh, to build, a, I don't know, a power supply, something like that. Uh, or starting, uh, you know, uh, measuring things, being able to go into a televisor and measure the voltage or whatever inside, in, inside there, the signal, the presence of the signal, the things like this. We also had uh, some discussions, some uh, lectures, some people came and talked to us. I still remember uh, almost in great details the discussion we had with Neil Armstrong uh, when he came and talked to us for a couple of hours, uh, what it meant for him uh, being part of uh, the X-15 program first and then uh, going on the Moon on the Apollo program later. It was a really, really great uh, inspirational thing. And then, um, you know, we did, uh, 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 in between the lectures, uh, we did several practical activities, uh, some field trips, for, for example, geological field trips. So going around, uh, it was in Arizona, we went around for a week and looked uh, at all the various uh, conformation of the soil and volcanoes and, and so on. Uh, and then uh, started doing uh, some uh, uh, practical things that were part of our activity at NASA, but we're also going into a little bit of the psychological part of it, pushing your boundaries. See how comfortable you are if you're put in a kind of a uh, no normal situation. So we did uh, water survival uh, in Pensacola, Florida, uh, where they taught us how to, you know, land in water with a parachute, use the equipment that you have to, to kind of save yourself, not being cold. Uh, cold uh, call uh, the um, um, people that would come and pick you up, uh, you know, things like this. And also we were put into the, um, into the same situation but in a forest. So now survive for a week uh, in a forest. Uh, we did this uh, up north uh, in, uh, in a forest uh, almost in Canada and at night it would get pretty cold. Uh, we did not have much to eat, uh, but we had to learn how to, you know, be be able to live, uh, survive, but even do a little bit more in this kind of situation. And um, NASA also had uh, a, a fleet of uh, trainer aircraft. Uh, these are supersonic uh, trainer aircraft. And uh, they used uh, normally the, this aircraft T-38 to train their uh, shuttle pilots uh, or shuttle commanders. And what would they would do? They would put us in the back seat, which has the, all the, co the controls as, uh, as uh, the front seat, so you can actually fly the plane. And what they would do, they would simply let you fly or ask you to fly uh, so that you can, uh, you can be put in a dynamic uh, operational environment where you need to be attentive of what you're doing uh, because the plane is very sensitive, you can flip or you can do things uh, very quickly, very bad and very quickly. Uh, but at the same, same time, you need to coordinate yourself with the other pilot, with the flight controller. You need to take the procedure and understanding what you need to do precisely. Uh, you need to follow instructions. You need to look at the cockpit and you have a, a, a quantity of information that can be overwhelming. Well, you need to understand which one you need to follow, which one you need to see. Uh, face by face. It's essentially a compressed uh, space flight. This was last uh, I don't know, one hour, two hours, very dense. Uh, but, but in this kind of uh, activity, you can actually exercise uh, a lot of the things that you will be exercising in space. And if you make a mistake, you pay on the plane. So it's a good uh, way to, to make you alert because you get used in the simulator of making mistake and dying. Okay, you are dead. Well, thank you. Let's start again. Well, on the plane, you don't have that choice. So you need to be careful of what you're doing. And, um, and then, uh, you know, little by little, we started doing uh, more complex uh, simulations where uh, we would wear uh, the actual uh, launch and entry suit. Uh, and, uh, and all of six would go into a simulator that would flip vertical and now you are there in an uncomfortable position with gloves you cannot feel anymore with the with the helmet so you cannot talk anymore if you are a little bit lost you cannot you know 
ask the guy, hey, what page are we? You know, it doesn't work here. Everybody's talking on the com loop and if everybody's talking like that, then nobody understands anything. So this is, a, this is part of now uh, working as a crew, understanding your role, understanding what you are supposed to provide and uh, be, uh, it's like, it's like a, I don't know, a concert where all the people that play instrument needs, needs to play at the same time, need to, you know, have a, a harmony and if they don't, the music will not really flow. So we, we, we train on this, there's a very uh, extensive simulations. Uh, but really they make you um, ready for flight. Uh, I would say that during the simulation usually there is a team of instructors somewhere else or even flight controllers that are actually trying to kill you. Uh, they are trying to, you know, inject into this simulated launch, they are trying to inject uh, enough uh, malfunctions to, to stumble the crew. So to, to make the crew work really, really hard uh, so that they understand what's going on and react properly. In fact, you get so, so well trained that uh, uh, during a regular space flight, you know, not even one tenth of what happened in simulation is happening. So it, it looks like nothing is happening in, in, when, you, when you fly for real. Because you are used at such a fast pace of things breaking, impossible things happen, happening one on top of the other. That is pretty amazing the way that you're really trained when you go to space. So uh, all of this, all of this training that I talked about now lasts about, uh, for me on the, on the shuttle and NASA lasts about two years. And then, uh, and then we enter into a phase where you are kind of suspended in limbo until you get an assignment for a space flight. And this, this is like, uh, uh, this phase is called something advanced training or pre-assignment training where you maintain what you have learned in basic training, you acquire new qualifications, and, uh, and you wait for your space flight. This can last uh, nothing for some people and very long time for some other people. Uh, in fact, for me, it lasted almost six years. Uh, in this uh, time frame, I learned uh, advanced things like uh, how to operate with the robotic arm, this is a very complex, uh, intricate uh, training. You know, to be a really good, good operator, it takes anywhere between six to eight months of training concentrated on that one. I learned uh, how to do spacewalks. Uh, those also are very complicated. Uh, we had, uh, I talk about, it took about a year of training for learning how to, you know, really effectively uh, operate uh, during a spacewalk, which is a complex uh, operation. And, um, and then, of, of course, on top of this, I was also given a, oh, astronaut normally at this stage are given a task, a technical task, meaning that uh, uh, they are uh, responsible for, I don't know, looking at the main engine and anything that happened with the main engine of the shuttle, that person responsible for the astronaut core for for the main engine would be there. I was, uh, I did, uh, my technical job was, uh, first of all, with training. So I would support the preparation of training. Uh, then I was uh, with the EVA branch. Uh, then I was assigned to the um, uh, branch of the astronaut office. They actually physically go to Cape Kennedy and prepare the shuttle for launch. Uh, this is a very important operational task where you need to go and make sure that everything works. And you actually physically take the crew, bring it into the spacecraft, uh, hook them up and everything, and then leave the, the, the hatch is closed and the, and the crew is launched. So a very important operational activities. And then eventually you are assigned to a flight uh, and this opens up another, the last uh, training phase uh, for the shuttle. It used to last uh, one year, one year and a half. Uh, currently on the space station, this is like more two and a half, three years, where you actually concentrate on the specific activities you're going to do on your space flight. This time you don't train on generic experiments, you are trained on that specific experiment. You are trained on that specific system. Uh, each one of us needs to be, um, it needs to know all the parts of the station, but there are some people that are expert, uh, which means that if something breaks on the station, 
they need to be able to really go deep into there, do not only maintenance, do uh, activities so they can fix stuff that is broken. You know, some other people concentrate on spacewalks and uh, some other people concentrate on manipulating the arm. I mean, there is, there is to be, there, is, there are so many jobs on station and, and the qualification are so, so high, they need to be so high that, you know, uh, most of us get qualified on several systems, but it's very difficult to be qualified on everything. There is not enough space or not enough time uh, to, for you to do this. On top of that, you may end up on training something, training for something today, and not see that system or that experiment for a year before you fly. And, and what I got in space, sometimes I was doing something and I had no idea I had trained for it because I simply did not remember. But anyhow, this part is uh, it's very interesting and then eventually you get to fly. So, summarize, the, the, the training of uh, an astronaut, preparation of a professional astronaut, is essentially composed of three parts. A basic training, when you learn what it means to be an astronaut, when you learn about... Uh, uh, everything uh, that you might uh, might encounter during a space flight and you learn to actually fly the vehicle that you're going to be flying in. Then there is the advanced training or pre-assignment training where you get more qualifications, maintain what you had learned before but, but you learn new things like spacewalks or robotics arm or things like this. You also have a technical job that you follow during this part and you might end up also doing a little bit of public relation, outreach activity, educational activity and things like this. And then eventually you get assigned to a space flight and then you get what is called mission training where you focus this time on the specific activities that you're going to do on the station. You get certified to be the expert on certain system and so if those break you are the one that is going to be uh, working on those and uh, you learn uh, about experiments and other things and then eventually you fly and there and there you go finally you put all of this training together and uh, and you're in space and uh, hopefully you work effectively as most of the astronauts do to achieve what they are uh, supposed to do when they go to space we'll see you in space <laughs>